How you do folks, welcome back to another short episode of the Chilly Northerner. Just wanted to give you an update on what's been going on since uh, since that horrible scorch episode of, uh, of a couple of weeks ago and also show you what has happened to my plants since um, since I got put them up and they've been outside for a few weeks. Uh, mixed results, but overall it's, it's going okay. But the worst thing is that um, um, we were now well into May and uh, normally within the UK outside overnight temperatures would be like um, you know at least 10 degrees or upwards but uh, it's just been very cold and even next week in the uh, where I am here in Harper I mean in the south of England not the north of England but um, you know you're looking at like um, temperatures are going to get down about maybe five six seven so obviously there's not I don't think there's not gonna be any frost which is great but you know temperatures are down so that kind of hinders the plants as well because they do grow during the night um, as long as it's like you know upwards of say 10 degrees C. Anyway, let's have a look. So we'll start with my two seven pod primos just to show you what's been going on there. Um, they've been potted up in here for about two weeks now. Um, it takes about two weeks until I really get settled and, and, then, and then obviously thereafter get motivated and <laughs> get going. But so they haven't really grown much and I've, I've had a few issues with um, uh, with um, green fly as well uh, on the new shoots. As you can see by this one here, uh, the, um, the leaves have been a little bit, um, a little bit crinkled because there was a few, uh, there was a few um, green fly kicking around them but you know it's uh, there's new growth there as well so a lot of this central this central stuff is, uh, is all new growth which is uh, which is fantastic uh, and um, you'll see the uh, um, new buds coming on there as well so there they are the buds that will hold the flowers haven't got any flowers quite yet um, that one there is about the best one I've got uh, yep, that's about the best one I've got. Uh, not quite budded yet, but I'm just going to let them do their own thing there now. I'm not going to pluck any more. I know you, I know I probably should, but I'm just a bit concerned with uh, with, with with what's happening in May as far as temperatures are concerned. That it may not uh, it may not take off quite well because obviously, as we well know by now, I don't have a greenhouse to help this uh, help this on. This one here looks in a bit better condition. To be honest, it's uh, the leaves are looking fantastic. Um, and uh, again we've got like uh, quite a few um, buds starting to show for the flowers plenty of uh, side shoots as well nice healthy side shoots loving that obviously with these side shoots um, the, uh, they'll obviously get further branches coming out and obviously that will bear more fruit so you know I'm not uh, I'm not over, I'm not overly worried yet just ever so slightly concerned possibly um, but you know we've got a long way to go yet we're not even through may things could change quite rapidly and sometimes do as you might be able to see actually um let me see, see it better in this one i've got this like a lot of gray around the, around the pots especially in this one you can see this one here a lot of gray uh, ash that's from the barbecue i had a few weeks ago <laughs> so i just thought i'd uh, float some of the uh, the pot ash into um into there full of nutrients always good so on to the next one I bought some of these flowers as well these are coming up quite good to be fair as you can see I've, I've installed this uh, this little fence just to try and keep the dog out that goes all the way around but uh, yeah some of these um, are looking fantastic I must say uh, lovely and these these will I put these in for a reason so these flowers will hopefully um, attract uh, hoverflies and ladybugs. Sorry, I got a bit overzealous there with the uh, with the potash on that one. But you know, the next lot of rain will wash, wash them all off. But they are looking decent. Um, yeah, put some potash all the way around there as well. <laughs> hey, I'll show you for what it is. You know, I am no fantastic gardener that's for sure um, what you'll see is all the bells and whistles and uh, and all the rubbish as well so 
don't worry about uh, me trying to hide anything from you because um, that will not happen. Good thing is, I've got some of my favourite flowers in the uh, in the garden now, which are these foxgloves. Absolutely beautiful. I do love foxgloves, one of my favourites this time of year. In fact, it is my favourite this time of year. I used to have loads in the garden, but um, uh, not so much. I've let the garden drop a little bit. You know, unfortunately, kind of like I've, uh, I let the garden go a little bit. Um, so it's um, I haven't really got that many you know plants and flowers in there, apart from obviously the chilies at the moment. But you know, um, I'm trying to get things a little bit back how they were before. Obviously, predominantly the garden was full of flowers. I mean, when I first moved in here 10 years ago, there was nothing here at all. So what you see, these raised beds was um, is, is all new. Um, well, not new, but you know, at least 10 years old. And uh, yeah, it was all just slabbed out. Um, and uh, yeah, nothing there at all. So I think I've done quite well to actually create what I've created. So yeah, let's get on with the chilies though. Right, this one here is my Naga Morich. Um, looking pretty damn good to be fair. Lovely thick stem, plenty of side shoots. I'm uh, really chuffed with that one. Could obviously do with a little bit more growing, but got plenty of time yet. And uh, loads of um, buds showing on that one as well. So, yeah. I had a few people, I made a Naga sauce last uh, last year. I mean, look at all of these, there's loads of them on there. I'm ready just to wear. Uh, to start flowering. Um, yeah, I made a naga sauce last year and it was uh, went down pretty damn well to be honest. Uh, and I tend to make another one this year. So this one here, Sugar Rush Stripey, probably the tallest one I've got. Um, I took out some of the bottom leaves just because I didn't want, um, I could probably do with taking, taking this one as well to be honest. Um, if I could, let's just add that off. You might think that's just a horrible thing I've done there, but uh, what that stops is the uh, slugs and snails when you actually climb up the uh, the side. Um, it stops them climbing onto the leaf because the leaf was actually hanging over the edge and then, they're, and then they're up and around. So what they have to do is actually then go into the soil first and hopefully munch on a few slug pellets. So with the uh, sugar or stripey, it's uh, growing and growing and growing. Um, no buds as of yet, but Plenty of new growth coming through. So yeah, jigsaw brain, CC jigsaw brain, uh, looking fantastic. Looking lots of healthy new um, leaves coming on there. This is settled in really well. And underneath, absolutely loads of buds coming through as well. Nice, strong um, stem as well. Look at that, fantastic looking stem that is. Really is a nice colored green, healthy plant. Um, now the rest of them, so we've got obviously my experimental one over here, so that's the that's the Thai. Again, it got munched, it got munched a bit, uh, to be fair, um, over all the, the rubbish weather were bad. Uh, but yeah, this is all new growth, all new growth come along there. So next on is the, uh, is the Staples Corner, which is uh, the Scotch Bonnet. Uh, looking good there, lots of nice growth on the top. So yeah, you know, two weeks again since it was since everything got put in. So it's just starting to take a hold there now. Uh, and within the next few weeks, I should see some uh, some good stuff coming through. So this is a cairn. This one you can see, this is the one which is badly. This was badly scorched. It really was. Um, yeah, so badly scorched it was indeed. Uh, but it's starting to pick up. And, uh, and yeah, there we go. First flower, not quite open yet. That's the first full on flower anyway. Lots of nice growth at the top. All looking good. Again, you'll see lots of this, the same thing on this one. This is a uh, another Scotch bonnet. Um, plenty of air uh, side shoots and lots of nice stuff growing on the top. So yeah, well chuffed with that. This one, this one is a jalapeno. Um, it's a CC jalapeno. Again, it got badly scorched to be fair. Uh, and really odd, this odd leaf. It's almost like a marriage of two leaves. Weird. Uh, yeah, looking good though. Healthy top foliage. Not so great down below, but you know, It'll come through. Um, 
over here. This one probably would hit the hardest to be fair. This is the uh, Kang Star 11 Starburst. Um, it's got a lot of nice new growth on the top, but uh, yeah, it's quite a compact plant, but um, it got really scorched badly. You can see that it's, um, yeah, it got hit badly. It will recover, but it's gonna take some time for that, for that to bear to come through. And finally, another cane. Uh, which again is doing okay really it's doing okay i do like a cane it's been munched a little bit but you know you're going to get that when you go outdoors um you're going to have to be prepared to lose some leaves it's not going to be a perfect plant outdoors unfortunately uh, but yeah loads of nice new growth again and uh, all good so folks as a bonus uh i Pretty much, I haven't forgotten about this, uh, my little cupboard under the stairs, but I still have a load of plants here. I see the problem was actually, <laughs> I actually created, oh sorry, I sowed way too many seeds for what I need. Um, and unfortunately I've got a shed load left, as you can see. It's starting to get uh, quite jungle-like underneath here. Uh, but I've got loads of different kinds. Um, Anti-Papi um, I've got I've got more Nagas. Uh, there's a couple of jalapenos in there, Scotch bonnets. Uh, in fact, some of them are even have even started to bear fruit. Now these are only in one liter uh, one liter containers still. I really need to get them out of here and get them into probably five liter containers. That's probably their, their, their next bet. And I've got a friend of mine as well who's who's going to take quite a few of these. So it's all good though. I'll, I'll quickly show you. So yes. Um, the fruit you can probably see i mean i mean it is a bit of a wreck to be fair so you know <laughs> don't take this as gospel how <laughs> you should be growing things at all um because it's not uh I just i'm just purely have too many and around out of space but as you can see there is a um an antip ahi dolma uh, pe uh pepper coming on which is yeah uh, which is a low um uh, it's a low scoville rating pepper uh, about five thousand and thereabouts but uh, yeah, plenty of flowers on these ones. Um, and I'll probably take that off to be fair. This one down here, now, as you can see, it says jalapeno, uh, but this is a, what I like to call the freak plant. Um, it's got a variegation on the leaf. Um, I mean, I got it from there, uh, I got it from uh, Sean, aka Chili Chump, and it came in the uh, in a jalapeno seed pack, so maybe it's a hybrid of something else, a bit of a, an odd crossbreed. But the uh, even the leaves don't look uh, look like normal chili leaves. Kind of odd, really. Um, but I'm going to grow it and see how we'll see what uh, see what kind of fruit it bears. Uh, and you never know, we might have a freaky new one. This one here, it's got loads of flowers. Oh, I'll just try and get this one out this one Trinity now the Trinity is a habanero um, this could well be my my own cross I mean they're looking decent to be fair I don't really want to chuck them away but uh, no, they're looking good they're looking good plenty of flowers on nice strong leaves plenty of good leaves good strong stems all looking decent to be fair and that's, an, that's another trinity as well which is which also has loads of flowers uh, no fruit but you know as i say they're all in one liter pots and that is why they are fruiting because they are probably pot bound or root bound whatever you want to call it and uh, that's that's how they work as soon as the roots hit the uh, hit the sides of the pots they say uh, the plant thinks oh well i've got enough room now let's uh, let's start reproducing and uh, and putting out fruit so yeah that's why you've got to keep on putting them up right then that definitely is it for this one and i'll see you on the next one cheers mm -hmm.